Hey, this is Talk RX with Dr. Neha, and today we have a special guest. Uh, Dr. Susan Blum is a colleague and friend of mine who is being an, a brave soul this week <laughs> to ask her communication questions so that all of you can learn. So, welcome, Susan. Thank you, Neha. I'm happy to, very happy to be here. Yay. Yay! So, tell me, what is your communication question? Well, my question is that as an Employer, right? Yeah. I have a whole staff of people here working here, Absolutely. and you gave this great discussion about sort of the drama triangle, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and about how uh, an, uh, some giving feedback to somebody or speaking to somebody that there's this uh, potential mm. for the person that I'm giving feedback to to feel victimized in the yeah. conversation. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, um, as an employer, I'm struggling with my own, uh, how do I, th there's often nothing I can do mm -hmm. to prevent somebody from becoming, feeling like they're a victim. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. it's about them and it's not always about me. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So how can I help prevent that from happening? Okay, so great question. <laughs> um, so in a drama triangle, right, it's that someone perceives, the victim perceives someone as a persecutor. Right. Right? And they often then go and rest, ask somebody else to rescue them. Yes. So if they have that experience with you, they're going to go find somebody else in your office. Right. And they're going to talk all about how you just said or did something. Right. So the first thing that comes to mind on that is, first of all, I love that you're aware of it. So what you're saying is, sometimes it's about them, but what is my part in this? Right. What can I do? So the first thing I tell you is tone. Tone is so big. So let's just do a little exercise right now. Okay. Okay? So you know the word O, like O-H? Okay, yeah. O. O. Like, it's like a pretty meaningless word okay. without tone. Right. Okay? The O. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want you to do right now is I want you to say O oh, like you're angry. O. Oh. Yeah. And what about O oh, like you're skeptical? Oh. What about O oh, like you're surprised? Oh. Yeah. And what about O oh, like you're pleased? Oh, nice. Right? Yeah, okay. So the first thing I'd say is oftentimes people worry about what it is they're saying mm -hmm. that's the problem. Mm -hmm. I would say the first thing to pay attention to is remember, by virtue of you owning this business, mm -hmm. you're in a position of authority. Yes. And in that place, be very mindful of your tone. Um, the second thing I'd tell you is you know what sometimes you need to say and that it might make you uncomfortable because when you have to give feedback to people that work with you, right. there's also the part of you that's like, oh, I really want to give them this feedback. I hope they get it well. I hope they receive it well. Right. Well, you can't really control how someone else receives no, it. No, I know. <laughs> I've, I've been living with that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm right? I'm practicing that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what you want to do in that scenario is just, first of all, always get their permission. Let them know something's coming. Yeah. Just as human beings, we kind of like to know what's happening. Tell them what the topic's about, because chances are they probably know if it's not something so great. Right. They probably know, like, oh, I didn't handle that well, or oh, she wants to talk to me. Um, and I think I would always use curiosity. Mm. One of the most important things is when, when, like, in giving feedback to someone else or in having a dialogue about something that you might be uncomfortable about, mm -hmm. If you shift into fear, mm -hmm. that energy is not good. Right? Yeah. Like, what happens? It shuts everything down. And, and actually, I find that I then say very, I, I'm not aligned with uh, speaking truthfully anymore. Mm. It sort of shifts me out of being able to think clearly and speak truthfully. And so then. And compassionately, it just sort of derails the conversation. Yeah. So then, what are you doing? Are you trying to just get through it? Well, I suppose that I suppose <laughs> that would be true. Or trying to regain my composure when you're aware that you know somehow practice some skills to bring yourself back. But yep. but it can certainly derail everything. Yeah. Right, and then all of a sudden the other person is wondering what just happened. And another thing you might do in that space is start sending mixed messages. Mm -hmm. So you're saying something, but then you're trying to take care of them because you want them to be okay, but you are, right? So everything starts getting blurred. Mm -hmm. So not only might you not say what you want to say, but you're also then sending these crazy mixed messages because you want to take care of them. Right. 
right? So one thing would be to shift into the space of believing that they're whole, resourceful, and capable. Do you believe that about the people that work here? Oh, sure, I do. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you give them feedback, at the end of it, say, does that resonate? Mm -hmm. Does this seem true to you? Mm -hmm. Because the other one thing I've noticed is when people shift into fear, they make statements instead of ask questions. Right? I mean, as doctors, right? We, people pay us to give advice to them. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a little bit of a shift, even though you're in a medical office. Mm -hmm. It's like, these are your team. This is your team. Mm -hmm. And so while they, of course, probably do want advice and want to understand things, they really want your connection. So even when you say something, just stay curious. Like, hey, is there something I'm missing? Because I always find that if somebody says something, even if it seems offensive to me, if at the end they say, does that resonate? I feel like there's space to create a bridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So does that feel like it answered your question? Yeah, that answered my question. I think there's also a part two. That an that's, a, that's a solid, great advice for me to take that whole forward. Um, I'm also always wondering, though, about... You know, there are some people that just are going to be a victim no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. And so I guess I need a little advice on how to, um, despite if I am clean, clean, I'm grounded, I'm connecting, I'm yep. speaking to the heart, just by virtue of the information that I have to transmit to the person, you know, I'm giving them yep. some hard feedback or whatever, yep. even the most gentle, heartfelt way, yep. that they're still going to feel like something take something personally yeah right in the in that whole interaction which is really about them yep and so how do I help people who are perpetually the victim mm -hmm. to uh, be more aware of that yeah and, and sort of owning their own piece in the drama triangle as the employer I have to help them my my role as the team leader, which is how yep. I see myself as the employer, is to help everybody be the best that they can be, you yep. know, and to grow, which is why you came and did our workshop <laughs> today, which is so great. Yeah. But I find that, um, so this is a way that I find some people need a little help. Yeah. You know, I'm happy to, to own my own piece, but I also yep. need to sometimes help people with their piece. Okay, so you definitely need to help people when they're on your team, right? There's the doctor piece in you that I'm hearing. Okay. <laughs> which is, you know, the over-caring piece? Like, you really want to help them. When you call someone a perpetual victim, that tells me that you've been trying for a little while. This isn't the first time. This isn't the second time. This isn't the tenth time. Right. By the time you're saying this to me, it means you've tried everything in your toolbox. It, probably, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, in that space, I mean, Susan, you may not really like this, but the answer is you got to let go of them not liking you. It's not, like, even I, don't, I don't care if they don't like well, Oh, okay. Well, it's not about them liking me. No. Nope. It's about the drama triangle that I don't want going on in the office. Oh, I'm trying to break I the get trauma it. Dra triangle. Oh, got it. Okay. So, uh, th when you talked about the drama triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and actually, we've all done a lot of work here, so it's not happening. There was situations that where yep. that was happening. But, you know, I, I, that's familiar to me. Yeah. And I know the players and their scenarios. Yeah, are yeah, yeah. To me. And so I'm just wondering. If it keeps going on. Yeah, and how to break the drama triangle when I know that I did my part. Right. And, it didn't, and I really wasn't. And, and so that there is, how do I help a, vic a person who feels like keeps, a victim? feels like a victim continually in a drama triangle okay. to get out of it. I misunderstood you. That's what I meant. So, got it. So, what happens in a situation like this is you let everybody know. So, these are the new rules. We all reset everything today. Okay, good. Yeah. These are the new rules. No drama triangle. We're going to hold confidentiality in the office, right? Yes. Because you guys already do that. You're a medical office. It's always good to remind it, though. That's why yeah. I'm really glad we did that today. Yes. And then what you're going to say is, hey, if you find yourself running a drama triangle, what I want you to know is you can always ask me to come in and help you have the conversation you need to have. Okay. But what is not acceptable is to say you don't know how to do it and then continue doing it, okay. right? You don't know how to step out, but yes. you're going to continue doing it. Right. So in a leadership role, your job then is to offer that support to be available. Oh, that's great. And then if you, don't, if you can't have that happen during the week, right, you set aside office hours. So once a week, 3 to 4.30 on Fridays, is the time that if you need my help, 
I am here to help you. That's a great idea. You know, yeah, otherwise you don't want to get stopped in the middle of everything. No, no, right? No. You have patient care. You have all this stuff happening. Right, but to, to make it clear that this is our values, these yeah. are the values for our office, that we're not going to have drama triangles. That's and right. That I'm available to help people who feel they're getting stuck. Yes. Okay, I like it. Okay. That's perfect. All Thank right. You. Yay. Yeah. So if any of you find yourself uh, caught in a drama triangle, which means I have an issue with Susan, and, and instead of talking to her about it, I go to someone else about it. If you find this in your family or in your work environment, just know that there are really healthy ways where you can step out of that. So make sure that you're not contributing to the problem, that you're actually going to help solve it. Thanks for joining us. This is Dr. Neha with TalkRx.